So hello, welcome to today's lesson on bifurcation. So today we will learn what bifurcation is and also talk about the saddle node bifurcation. So I'm Wido Kran Randolph, a third year student of mathematics, Keen USD, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like the video if it helps you. So what is bifurcation? So in dynamical systems, a bifurcation occurs when a smooth change made to the parameter values of a system causes a sudden qualitative or topological change in its behavior. So simply put, it means that when you have a scalar differential equation and you want to discuss stability and for instance, um, you get a parameter. As this parameter here is being varied, you realize that there is going to be a change in the stability of the scalar differential equation. And this is what bifurcation is all about. So, when it comes to the one dimensional bifurcation, we have three types of them we have the saddle node, we have the transcritical, and we have the pitchfork. So, today we'll be talking about the saddle node. So, the saddle node bifurcation is also called the fold, tangent, or turning point bifurcation. So, in this type of bifurcation, fixed points are created and destroyed. So, simply put, let's say you consider two regions, region 1 and region 2. So, in region 1, if two fixed points are created, say x1 star, and x2 star. So if they are created in region 2, 1, sorry, then in region 2, they will be destroyed. So these two fixed points will be destroyed. So in the saddle node bifurcation, fixed points are created and destroyed. So this thing here is a prototype of the saddle node bifurcation. So that's the general form of it. So it's very important, you have to take a very critical look at it. So let's take an example. So this example says we should discuss the bifurcation of the x dt equals alpha plus x squared. So you can see that this is of the form of the prototype of the saddle node bifurcation. So when you have a question like this, the first thing we do is to find our fixed points. So in finding for our fixed point, we always put the derivative, that's the x dt to zero. So putting the x dt to zero, you get alpha plus x squared will be equal to zero. Then we try to find x. So x squared is equal to negative alpha. Then when you find the square root of both sides, then you get x will be equal to plus or minus root of negative alpha. So that means that we are going to have two values for x, right? So x1 takes the positive and x2 takes the negative. But you know that here our alpha here is a parameter, which is um, in the real number. So that means that our alpha will range from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we are going to consider two regions here. That's from negative infinity to zero and from 0 to positive infinity. So this is when alpha is less than 0, and this is when alpha is greater than 0. So that means you are going to have two regions. So we we'll call this region 1, we we'll call this region 2. So, but our alpha is a parameter, as we can see here. So we choose two regions, alpha less than 0 and alpha greater than 0. So region 1, our alpha less than 0. So recall that we had S12 equals this year. I hope you recall. So our alpha is less than zero. That means our alpha is negative here. So since our alpha is negative here, that means this alpha here will be negative. So we have x1, which is equal to plus minus alpha. And we have S2, which will be equal to minus root of minus alpha but here we are seeing our alpha is less than zero 
that means you have x1 star that's the first phase point to be root of minus bracket minus infinity because our alpha is less than zero so that means it is negative and it's going to give us s1 star to be equal to root of positive alpha sorry then this will give us s2 star to be equal to negative root of negative negative alpha and this will give us negative root of alpha so this will be our second fixed point so that means in this region two fixed points are created i hope you can see them here so there's the first fixed point and this is the second fixed point so the next thing is for us to discuss the stability of these two fixed points in this region so we let our f of x be alpha plus s squared so always our f of x is equal to whatever we have here so that's how you can see our f of x being equal to alpha plus x squared then we find the first derivative of f of x with respect to x so this gives us 2x then we then substitute our um, fixed point in it so when you put in our first fixed point that's root of alpha you are going to get two roots of alpha here because wherever you find x we put root of alpha there and this is greater than zero so that means that in this particular region the fixed point n1 star equals root of alpha is unstable since it is greater than zero here then when you put in our second fixed point we, we have wherever you find um, x you put negative root of alpha then so this is going to give us a negative value which is less than zero so that means that our second fixed point is asymptotically stable so you can see in region one two fixed points were created and we've been able to discuss their stability so based on the definition of the saddle node bifurcation that means in the second region we expect the two fixed points to be destroyed so let's find out so in region 2 we consider when our alpha is greater than 0 so recall that our x1 2 was equal to plus or minus root of negative alpha so since our alpha is greater than 0 that means our x1 will be equal to positive root of negative alpha and this is the same as root of alpha times root of negative 1 and the same as root of alpha but recall that i squared is equal to negative 1 from our complex number so that means i is equal to root of negative 1 so this is the same as times i is the same as i root of alpha so that means our x2 which is equal to negative root of negative alpha will be the same thing except that there is a negative here so negative root of alpha so that's what you can see here so there's our x1 here and there's our x2 here so here can you see that our x1 and x2 are complex numbers <laughs> i hope you can see that but well, you could recall that in the question we said for all x alpha being in the real number so here we are out of contest because we have complex numbers here so that means that in this particular region the two fixed points are destroyed we don't have fixed points here you get it so therefore the fixed points are destroyed in this region and you can see it follows the definition of the saddle node bifurcation so in conclusion we can see that two fixed points were created that's s1 star equals root of alpha and s2 star equals root of negative um, negative root of alpha for alpha less than zero and those two fixed points got destroyed or they disappeared at the region alpha greater than zero so hence our scalar differential equation undergoes the saddle node bifurcation and the bifurcation point is alpha equals zero so the reason is alpha equals zero is you realize that when you consider the region so from negative infinity to infinity at zero we considered the region to the right hand side of zero or anything greater than zero we also consider things less than zero so you could realize that this year was 
there. Let's see, turning point. Or is it the bifurcation point because that cell has the boundary? I hope you get that. Right? So that's the reason why the bifurcation point is alpha equals zero. Right? So thank you very much once again. And please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the videos. Thank you.